Okay, so if you want to be successful in algebra, you absolutely must know how to solve all different types of equations. Now, in algebra, you just don't learn how to solve one type of equation. Uh, for example, uh, we have this uh, problem right here. These are actually two equations. This thing is called a system of linear equations. But in algebra, you learn all different uh, types of equations, things like uh, 2x minus 1 is equal to 9. This is like a linear equation. Now, if I put a little 2 up there, now we have a quadratic equation. We can have radical equations. We can have all different uh, types of equations in algebra, and you must know how to solve each type of equation. And when you uh, take on an equation, there's different methods and techniques that you can use. Now, this particular problem right here is a two-variable linear uh, system, okay? And one of the most common, one of the most important techniques that you can use as a student or maybe just someone that is interested in algebra is a method called the substitution method. This is an absolute must-know uh, in terms of how to solve systems. Now, it's not the only method. There's another method out there called uh, the elimination or linear combination method. You actually need to know both methods. And when you get into more advanced algebra, there's even additional methods that you can use to solve systems. But I'm going to uh, kind of focus in on the substitution method, and I'm going to try to teach you this in about like 10 minutes. Okay, but if you could solve this problem right now, either using the substitution method or linear combination method, uh, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through exactly how to solve this problem step-by-step step using the substitution method only. Okay, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here is our problem. And we have two variables here, x and y. We are trying to find uh, the value of each of these, i.e. the solution. And let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer for this particular problem is x is equal to 33 over 4 and y is equal to negative 1 fourth. Okay, now if you got this right, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving two variable linear systems using the substitution method. Now, when you tell your friends and family that, they're going to be pretty much like this. They'll be like, uh, don't bore me with all that crazy math stuff. I want to get back to my Netflix. But uh, anyways, all jokes aside, you should be uh, pretty proud of yourself uh, if, in fact, you were able to solve this because you can see here that our answers, you know, have uh, some fractions in, in, uh, in them. You know, it's not such an easy system to solve. But uh, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to try to explain the substitution method in about 10 minutes. But before we do, let's just do a quick, quick, fast review about uh, uh, two variable linear systems in general. Okay, so here we have two equations in this system. And these two equations have two variables, x and y. And over here we have x and y. But really, we can think of, as, uh, think of these two equations as lines. These are what we call linear equations, i.e. line equations. So I could think of this as maybe like one line and this like another line. And we could graph these two lines on an xy uh, plane. X, y, let's say we had some graphing paper. We could graph these two lines. I'm not going to do this now, but I just want to make sure we understand some basics about systems. So let's say one line went like this and another line went like so. Now, if the if the system has a solution, okay, the solution is the point of intersection of these two lines. Okay, so wherever these uh, two lines intersect, of course, that's uh, going to be a specific x, y ordered pair, a specific coordinate. This right here is where these two lines intersect. That is the solution. So these two lines actually intersect at this uh, uh, the coordinates um, x, y, where x is this number and y is that number. So if we were to graph these um, two lines, uh, this is uh, this precise point where um, 
those two lines would intersect. That's by definition the uh, solution to a two-variable linear system. But I did say that some systems do not have um, uh, solutions because let's suppose I have one line like this and let's suppose there is another line next to it that we have uh, basically a parallel line situation. So in this case, you know, you do not have any solutions. Now, systems is a big, huge topic in algebra, and uh, we're only going to be scratching the surface. So uh, just a quick review on those of you out there that are like, I don't even know what a system is because maybe you haven't even studied this yet. Maybe you're like in pre-algebra and you're like, I don't even know what a system is. Well, this uh, video will be a nice, quick introduction. Okay, so here is our two-variable linear system. Again, we have two lines, one line here, one line here and hopefully these two lines intersect and the point of intersection will be the solution. Now we have different options here to solve this system, okay, or try to solve it. We could use the elimination or linear combination method or uh, a method called the graphing method, which I just pretty much explained. You can graph the lines and look for the point of intersection or the substitution method, okay? Now, you pretty much need to know all these methods, but the uh, idea is uh, the same uh, irrespective of what method you use. Now here I have one equation with two variables, x and y, and I have over here another equation with two variables, x and y. What I want to do is create one equation with just one variable only, okay? Now I don't really care if that variable is all x's or all y's. It doesn't make a difference. I just need to create one equation with one variable, not two variables. And the way we can do that is using uh, substitution. Okay, now let's take a look at this uh, situation right here. We have x is equal to 3y plus 9. All right, so if x is the same thing as 3y plus 9, well, this x right here, I could write as 3y plus 9 because x and 3y plus 9 are the same thing. They're equivalent to one another because that's what this equation is saying. So this is the whole idea behind the substitution method is to... Uh, solve for one variable, or when you have two equations, is try to get uh, uh, one equation. You want to solve for one variable in one equation. That's pretty much the way I wanted to <laughs> state that. So here, uh, this equation is already set up perfectly for us because x is equal to 3y plus 9. Let's suppose I wanted to solve or set this um, equation up for, uh, let's say, y. Okay, well, I want to write this in terms of y, so I would subtract x from both sides of the equation. So y is equal to negative x plus eight. Okay, I would have to do that. So now I know y is equal to this. So I could substitute in this equation, this y for all of this. But why do all that work? Because in this equation, everything is set up nice and lovely for us. Now this is just one quick basic example on the substitution method. Uh, you're definitely going to want to practice uh, this method along with the other methods uh, with much more challenging problems, but I'm just kind of setting this up nice and easy. All right, so uh, before we take the next step here, we have x equal to 3y plus 9. Well, if x is all this stuff, why well, can replace this x right here with all this stuff? And now I have one equation with just y's in it, okay? And that's what we want to do is create one equation with one variable. So let's go ahead and take the next step. And again, we're going to replace this x right here with all of this stuff, 3y plus 9. And when you replace a variable, okay, this is important right here, with another kind of expression, always use parentheses, okay? This will really help you um, not make uh, errors, algebraic errors, when, especially when you have to use the distributive property. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I definitely need your support. Now I've been on YouTube for a good 10 plus years. I have well over 2000 plus videos from basic math to advanced math and everything in between. And right now I have like 400, or sorry, 550, uh, 514,000, can't even think, 514,000 plus subscribers. That's a crazy amount of people and millions and millions of views. Guess what? I still ask every video I do, I ask for support because I need your support, okay? I need your support. Um, and the reason why I need your support is I'm trying to reach as many people as possible to help them in mathematics or people are just interested in math. And there's certainly far more people than uh, this amount of people. But uh, every person that subscribes to my channel, I really do look at as if I gained a new student and they will not try to waste your time 
with valuable that is not content. So I put a lot of effort into my uh, YouTube videos uh, because whatever, you know, if you're going to spend a, a few minutes with me, I want to make sure I try to deliver some high value content, but I do need your support. So if you can hit that subscribe button and if you're going to do that, might as well hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's get back to this problem now. So we have x is equal to 3y plus 9, and we have x plus y is equal to 8. So we have different choices here, but I'm like, wow, this, uh, this equation is already solved for one variable. Okay. Now, if we didn't have this equation solved for one variable, we would have to solve for one variable. Uh, that would be our first step. Okay. So for example, let's say right here I had x minus 3y is equal to 9. Okay. Let's say these were uh, this equation and this equation was in my system. Now, uh, both of these equations, I don't have one variable solved for. In other words, I don't have x is equal to this. I don't have y is equal to that. So we would have to solve for one of those variables. And you always, of course, want to solve for uh, the variable that is the easiest to solve for. And you have four choices. I can either solve for the x here or the y here, or I can solve for x here or y here. So in this particular um, scenario, let's suppose this was our problem. I would just move this 3y over to the other side. So x would be equal to 3y plus 9. Now, a lot of students struggle with solving for uh, one variable in multi-variable equations. If you need help with this stuff, okay, I have, uh, you know, how to, you know, work with variables and equations, check out my full Algebra 1 course. I'll, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that could help you out. Okay, but that's really important that you understand how to solve for one variable, because if we can't do that, then we can't take this next step. All right, so x is equal to 3y plus 9. We're going to replace this x with 3y plus 9. And now we have what we wanted, which is one equation with one variable. So I have one equation, and we have one variable y. So at this point, all we need to do is solve this uh, one variable linear equation. Okay, so 3y plus 9 plus y, so I can combine these uh, y's here. These are uh, like terms. So 3y and y, that's 4y plus 9 is equal to 8. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 9 from both sides of the equation. Hopefully this is basic algebra. I have 4 for most of you out there, right? 4y is equal to negative 1. So solving for y, y is equal to negative 1 fourth. Okay, so we have y. Remember, we're looking for that coordinate, the solution. We have one line and another line, we're looking for that specific x, y point right here. And what we just uh, did, okay, is find out that y coordinate. Now we need the x coordinate. So to get x, we could, all we need to do is take our, our y answer, y is equal to negative 1 fourth, and just plug it into any one of the equations. Uh, the easiest one is this one, because x is equal to 3y plus 9. So all I have to do is replace this y right here with negative one fourth and simplify and I can get my X answer. So let's gonna do that right here. So negative one fourth, we're gonna plug in where X is at. So three times negative one fourth plus nine, X is equal to negative three fourths plus nine. And of course, uh, to be successful in algebra, you must be successful uh, in working with fractions. So X is equal to negative three fourths plus nine or nine over one. And you can see here, the LCD is four. So I'm gonna uh, change this fraction uh, where the denominator is 4 by multiplying the numerator and denominator by 4. So we have 36 over 4, negative 3 fourths over 4, plus 36 over 4. There you go, 33 over 4. Finally, uh, we are done. So that's why, you know, those of you that were able to get this problem right initially, you know, that was very good because you showed a lot of skills, especially with uh, working with fractions. So here is our final answer, x is equal to 33 over 4 and y is equal to negative 1 fourth. Again, these represent the ordered pair coordinate where these two lines would intersect. Okay, so if some of you out there are like, wow, you know, uh, there's you know, a lot of stuff here I forgot, even like fractions and whatnot. Now, if some of you are not students, but you just are interested in algebra and you uh, kind of want to relearn this stuff, or even those of you that are students, you got to check out my new course. This is a fantastic course. It's called my Math Skills Rebuilder course. Okay, you'll find a link to it in the description. But in that course, I cover basic mathematics like arithmetic, fractions, uh, order of operations, all that stuff that uh, most people think they know better than they actually do, place values, decimal, percent. 
And then I teach you a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry, even some basic trigonometry and some probability and statistics. So that is a great course for those of you that just want to review, you know, uh, your overall, you know, math skills that maybe you learned in college or high school. But if you are an algebra student, an algebra one or algebra two student, I would highly recommend my full courses because I teach you much, much more in my full Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses, things like linear programming, uh, which is very complicated in terms of systems. Uh, most students struggle that <laughs> struggle with that uh, topic. They end up looking like this. So I get into all of the topics that you will need to know to be successful in Algebra in depth. But uh, anyways, uh, with that being said, okay, I definitely appreciate you uh, checking out this video. And if it helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.